Hello everyone. Uh, today I want to show you um, a little bit of a trick that I come up with to generate uh, dynamic ladders. Um, so one of the things I've been working on is trying to come up with ways for people for a character to place a ladder in the in a certain level and be able to climb through it. So let me show you what I mean. Um, let's say we come up here and we move next to this, we can see a preview of the ladder uh, in any of these four spots that I have here. I'm not sure you can see it very easily in the video, but... And then if you click, it basically um, places a ladder. Now, the cool thing about this is that the number of steps in this ladder are dynamic, so it depends on the height. If you see the second place where I'm going to place this ladder, it's gonna be taller because the end location was a bit higher than the previous one. Now this one is a kind of a short ladder here uh, because it's up there and then this one is a really long one up there so if I place it you can see all four ladders they have dynamic sizes and the number of steps is also dynamic depending on the on the height that you need. Um, so the way I did this and this was done um, a lot in C++ so um, yeah it's not as easy as in blueprints but it's still um, the easiest way to do it. So to explain a little bit how, how I did it, I have this uh, base C++ class called Dynamic Ladder. And this class basically has, um, well, it has a struct that I'm using to instruct the server where I want the ladder placed. So the transform uh, for both the start and end points that you saw when placing the ladders. Uh, then I have um, a climb collider, which I use to let the player be able to climb a ladder. And the most important things about the dynamic generation are the left bar mesh, the right bar mesh, and the first step mesh. <clears throat> These are basically the uh, <laughs> blueprints, if you may, if you will, um, for the meshes that I'm going to use to generate the rest of the of the ladder. And then I'm basically storing in an array the the other steps that I generate dynamically. Um, one thing is I, I actually made this work also over the network, so uh, it's uh, multiplayer ready, um, maybe with some <laughs> bugs or so because I'm not a specialist in, in networking um, in Unreal. But in any case, the way I did it was uh, we have this struct, as I mentioned before, and I am basically um, replicating this ladder bounce that has the start and end transforms. And whenever this property changes, I know I need to set a ladder uh, dynamically from start to end. And so let's see, what can I show you? Um, yeah, let's look at the blueprint version of the dynamic ladder. Um, this is basically, if you look at the viewport, you have the left bar mesh, the right bar mesh, and the first step mesh. And I just set them to a cylinder. And these scales and rotations and whatever else I need to set them in the correct positions are done via C++. Um, the, the blueprint is mainly to define what meshes do I want to compose the ladder of. And then I have this uh, ladder start. It's basically a, a way for me to specify where the ladder starts. And then I have an equivalent ladder end that just kind of placeholder um, uh, blocks, so to speak. So the really interesting part also happens on the player pawn or the, the character, third person character, whatever you may, may be using. And um, <clears throat> so what I'm doing on event tick is I want to, I call this function called show ladder preview, which is uh, the first ladder that you see when you hover over the, the start. And this basically um, does basically a trace to find the ladder start somewhere, somewhere. That's why it only works if you point to a ladder start. And um, if we find the ladder start and we're not already setting a ladder, then it traces up from the ladder start to the ladder end to know uh, if we can place a ladder in that location or not. And then it spawns a dynamic ladder and calls this C++ function called update ladder. And this is actually what 
generates the dynamic part of the ladder. So it basically builds it up. Um, and if we cannot find a, a ladder start and we were already setting a, a ladder, so we already have a ladder in our reference uh, variable, we basically destroy it so we can just show a preview and uh, unless we click on it to really add it, we just have a preview and then we stop having a preview. Um, another thing on the event graph is if we do indeed click, um, if we click and we are setting a ladder, if we don't, I have all this uh, firing and, and stuff that, that's going on, but if we are setting a ladder, so we're in preview mode, we already see the preview of the ladder and we click, click it, then we create a ladder. And this is basically going to uh, destroy the, the preview ladder that we have. Uh, take notice of the start and end transforms. And this will call place ladder uh, for real, for real and on the server. So if we take a look at this place ladder uh, function, if the role is under role authority, so we're not uh, on the server basically, we call server place ladder. So it runs on the server and the server place uh, ladder only calls place ladder again on the server. And then if its role is authority, uh, we are spawning a new ladder and we set the ladder to replicate, we set the owner and we set the bounds. So we make that um, that uh, variable that has the, both the transforms, we make it replicate basically to the clients, which will in turn trigger the, uh, on the dynamic ladder, it will trigger the, where is it? Uh, the on wrap ladder bounds, which is going to call the update ladder. So this update ladder was already being called on the preview version. This time is being called on the server. And what it does is this. It will basically uh, calculate the height based on the start and end transforms, uh, store a bunch of other uh, small values depending on the height that we need to set scales and stuff like that. It will set up the arms, basically uh, scaling them up to the intended height and also um, offsetting them because uh, the reference point is the middle so we just offset them up and sets up the climb collider doesn't really matter and then it does uh, we already know how many steps we need I'm doing like a 50 centimeter interval between steps and I know how many I need and I just generate them now the trick here is to use this new object function instead of the create default sub object because that one is only going to work on the constructor and if you're doing it dynamically, you need to use this new object. And then we need to set it to replicate and register it as a component on our mesh. And this will take care of everything for us. Um, yeah, and then we just uh, attach it to the, to the you know, root element. Uh, we set the same material as the first step that we already have. We take care of scale, rotation and location for this new step and we add it to our array so we have a reference of all the steps later. Um, yeah, so this is a kind of a cool way to do a kind of a procedural ladder, uh, if you will. Uh, and it's not too hard. Uh, you just need to take... Actually, the only thing that was a bit trickier to find out was the uh, that, that I needed to use the new object instead of create default sub object. But apart from that, it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, like I said, I'm not sure the networking part is terribly right, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it appears to be working. So yeah, that's it. Okay, this was just a, a small um, example what we can with what we can do in terms of procedurally generated uh, actors. I hope you liked it, and uh, yeah, let me know if you find any gigantic errors in terms of networking in the comments and. Uh, yeah, uh, next tutorial I'll try to do the blue zone uh, battle royale kind of style thing. Um, I already have it done, I just had, had the time to, to record the tutorial. Um, this one was faster to record as you can see. So yeah, talk to you later guys, hope you liked it.